Hey, welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here today as we are walking through the book of Jeremiah. And uh, today we're going to be looking at at a section where uh, Jeremiah is calling out the kings directly. Uh, God sends him to uh, the palace and to talk to the kings, to, to let them know that God is displeased with their behavior. And through this, uh, this kind of section here, he kind of goes back several generations and calls out the sins of the kings, turning their back on God. Um, the reason why this is important here is because God expects his leaders to lead well. He expects more from his leaders than he does from the people around. He, he knows the influence they have. He knows the privilege they've been given and the opportunities. And from when God has entrusted them with much, he expects a lot from them. So when they fall short, he knows that it not just affects them, it affects everyone around them. It affects the, the city, it affects the, the nation. Uh, so God expects a lot from his leaders here. Uh, in this passage here, we're also going to see God point to his, his, uh, his, his rescue plan. He's going to unfold that a little bit here. So let me pick it up here in Jeremiah chapter 23. It says this. It says, What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you've deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I will pour out judgment for you, for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their own sheepfold, and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them, and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. For a time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. In this passage here, uh, condemnation is coming down for all the kings who have taken advantage of the people. The shepherds who didn't protect the sheep, uh, that use their position of of power and influence and wealth for their own benefit, not for protecting the people, the sheep that God entrusts to their care. So he is going to send the good shepherd, the Messiah, the Savior, King Jesus is going to come and he's going to save his people. He's going to be a descendant of King David that is going to come from King David's royal family line. The Messiah is going to come. And, you know, the, the big unarching story of Scripture that we've been uncovering uh, at our, on our weekend services is that God's unfolding his plan of salvation. And he makes this promise with David uh, that through his family line, the Savior is going to come. Here, in this reference here in Jeremiah, it's directly tied to that. It's from the line of King David. It says, uh, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. Once again, connecting this Messiah, the Savior, Jesus, to King David, the man after God's own heart. This weekend, we're going to be unpacking that a bit more. I encourage you to to be there at at services as we do that. But for today, we look at this, this passage here, and God expects his leaders to lead well by example. Not just telling people what to do, but living it out. Taking it, the, the responsibility of everything that God's entrusted them with. He, he's given them privilege. He's given them power. He's given them wealth. They should be using that for the benefit of others, not for the benefit of themselves. And Jesus uh, emphasized this in his ministry. He said, if you want to be great in my kingdom, you have to be last. Leaders serve. And if you're not going to do that, then you're not the type of leader that I want. God is condemning the kings of Israel because they didn't take this responsibility. They didn't shepherd the flock. They were in it for themselves. And because of that, they were destroyed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, uh, just at this beginning of the day, and thank you for the opportunity to to spend some time with you, to, to look into your word, to find out about your character. And God, forgive us for the times that we've We've used our influence, we've used our, our position, we've used our power for, for our benefit, not the benefit of others. God, help us to remember 
uh, just the example of Jesus. That he came in the form of a servant. He came in humility and he gave up his life on our behalf. Help us to live that way. And help us to, to live with humility. And help us to put others first. Help us to care for those around us, our, our family members, uh, people in our work environment, our community. Um, God, may we lead well in whatever capacity, whatever opportunity you've given us to do that. Whether it's our children, whether it's just a couple of people, or whether it's a large organization. God, may we be good stewards of the resources and the responsibility that you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.